I don't know about you, but I don't like to waste time when mixing music. I like to start and finish a mix with good results without spending hours and hours into rabbit holes, losing perspective on what I'm doing and making bad mixing decisions, which is usually the case when you spend way too much time mixing the same song. So I'm going to share with you 12 mixing mistakes, slowing you down and how you can fix them. Now, the first mistake is not to work with a mix template. For the most part, working with a mix template makes my mixing process way more fast due to the fact that I don't need to set up a mixing session every time I need to start a new mix. So if you look at my mix template, uh, you will notice that I have a bunch of plugins that are loaded where most of them are bypassed. The only plugins that are active are the ones on effects channel tracks, where all the faders are down. I'm gonna bring them up to taste as I go, so I don't need to reload them every time I mix a track, because chances are I'm gonna use the same plugins and mostly the same plugin chain, so that's why I like to have them loaded and ready to go. And for example, if there's one effects channel I don't use for a specific mix, I can just get rid of it. But at least it's preloaded on my template and it saves me lots of time when it comes to routing. And the routing stuff is the type of task I need to do anyways when I start mixing a session. So I might as well set that up right away by using a template so I can save all of that time when mixing music. And when it comes to the plugins, when I activate them, it's not necessarily a one size fits all. So I definitely need to adjust with the tracks I'm mixing. Now you can create several mix templates depending on the style of music you're mixing. Okay, so you can have one for uh, an EDM production, one for a rock uh, mix, a country, a pop mix, you know, and that will definitely speed up your workflow. Now, if you wanna know how you can build your own personalized mix template, I made a free course for you. I'm gonna leave the link down below. Now, the next mistake is not paying attention to the rough mix. For me, working on a balanced mix, aka a rough mix, is part of my workflow. It helps me to get a good vision of the song I'm mixing, especially when I'm working with a client. The client usually provides me with a rough mix of his uh, just to share with me his vision of the song, the production, and where he wants or she wants to bring the mix at. And even when I mix my own music, I always work on a balanced mix before I start adding any plugins. So that means balancing the drum tracks together, bringing up the bass, the guitars, panning tracks around, because my goal is to make the best mix possible before adding some processing and plugins. So this way I have a very good starting point. So let's jump in Cubase and look at this rough mix that I have here. There's no plugins whatsoever, you know, that are active. And this is what I have. Now, it doesn't sound like a finished product, but it does sound pretty good, you know, for a song that has no plugins whatsoever. And that was recorded in a home studio. Just working on a balance mix without processing to begin with is gonna be way easier for you to move forward and make the right decisions when adding processing. And who knows, with a good rough mix, maybe at the end of the day, you'll mix with less plugins than you're used to. Not focusing on the important elements of a mix. It's not all instruments that need the same attention when it comes to mixing. There's some important elements and there's some secondary elements. For most songs I'm gonna mix, the important elements are gonna remain the same. We're talking about the vocals, especially the lead vocal, drums and bass, okay? Basically everything that is in the center of the stereo field. And as far as the drum goes, we're mainly talking about the kick and snare sound. So if you nailed the drums, the bass, and the vocals on most songs, you're nailing the mix. You know, everything else will be easy to mix. So avoid spending too much time on tracks that will not matter as much as the main elements of the song you're mixing. So I will spend way more time mixing my drums, my bass, and I'm gonna make sure the lead vocal sounds amazing and the rest like guitars, synths, 
pads, uh, pianos, you know, are gonna mix themselves pretty easily with not a lot of processing usually. And if I'm mixing an instrumental song where there's no vocal, I'm gonna try to find out what is the lead instrument. And that will become an element I'm gonna focus on. Next on the list is working with plugins you don't know well enough. Now there's so many plugins out there new plugins coming out every week and that can be very distracting and the worst thing you can do is to buy new plugins or installing free ones and try them out in the middle of a mixing session this is definitely gonna slow you down it takes time to to learn how the plugin works how it behaves how it affects the sound. There's a time to learn about a new plugin. I actually have like a couple of mix sessions already good to go that I only use to try new plugins, but my time is allocated to that only. I never try a new plugin in the middle of a mix session, whether I mix my own music or a client's project. So the way I work and the way I suggest you to work also is only mix with the plugins you know well. This is gonna speed up your mixing workflow and you won't waste any time. The thing is when loading a plugin, by default, your DAW will show you the full list of plugins you have access to. And by having all that list of plugins in front of me can be very distracting. And I can easily start to wasting time just by looking at the list of plugins and maybe get tempted to try a new one, you know? So what I do on my side is I create myself a plugin folder of all my favorite plugins that I work with all the time. Uh, so this one is called Chris Favorites. And there you go. They all categorized in different folders. So this way it's pretty easy to go and reach for the plugin of my choice. And if it's in this list, I know that I can work with this plugin without wasting any time to learn the thing, you know, because if it makes the plugin list, that means I know it well. The next mistake that can slow you down when mixing is not to know your monitoring system well enough. That could be your studio monitors, it could be your mixing headphones. The important thing is to know them inside out. So that means you take the time to listen to music through your system the same way you mix in your DAW. And the same goes for headphones. And if you're using a speaker or headphone correction software like Sonarworks, for example, make sure you listen to music through that same processing. Because this is the way you're gonna listen to your mixes in your DAW. You're gonna activate the Sonarworks or the IK Multimedia Arc plugin, and you're gonna mix through this, you know, just to have a more flat response, whether you're using speakers or headphones. So you need to use the same process when listening to music through your system. And by taking the time to know your monitoring system well, that will help you to make good mixing decisions with confidence. Not working with pro reference mixes is also, in my opinion, a mistake that will slow you down. Now, the goal of working with one or several reference mixes is to make sure you're in the same ballpark. So I do have a playlist of my favorite mix references that I use all the time that I know very, very well. So this way, depending on the style of music I'm mixing, I can reach out to one or a couple of mix references when I mix a song, just to keep myself in the same ballpark. Now, in the question I ask myself, when working with a reference mix is what am I listening for? Am I listening to the general tone of the song and this is what I want to get close to? Or is it the balance of the instruments together, the way the vocal interacts with the rest of the instrumentation or the level of the kick and snare and the interaction between kick and bass? Sometimes it's just a couple of elements that I like out of the mix reference that I want to get close to. Now, the goal is not to copy. And if you're worried about copying a mix reference, Trust me, that will not happen. You know, you're not even mixing the same recording to begin with, you know, so it's gonna be very, very hard and challenging to sound exactly the same. And that is not the point on working with mix references. The point is only to make sure you're in the same ballpark regarding what you like about this mix reference. And the important thing when choosing a song that you wanna reference to is to choose a pro level production that sounds good, that is well mixed, that you can rely on. Try to make your tracks sound good in solo. I'm not against putting a track in solo to tweak things up. Sometimes we need to actually. However, all the main decisions should be made 
in the context of the mix and not while your track is in solo. Because it doesn't matter much if the track doesn't sound very good in solo. What's important is that it sounds good within the mix itself. People will not listen to individual tracks out of your mix. They're gonna listen to the full song as a whole, okay? And you can actually waste so much time if you mix too much in solo. You're gonna spend some time to craft your sound to make sure it sounds amazing on its own. And the minute you're gonna unmute the track, you're gonna have to make sure that the track works well with the rest of the mix. So you might as well make all of your mixing decisions in the context of the mix, and then you can tweak stuff in solo by keeping in mind what needs to be done in the context of the mix. I actually heard a quote, I forgot who it was from, uh, but it was a pro mixing engineer claiming that if all your tracks sounds good in solo, you might have a problem with your mix. The next one looks pretty easy, but it's not as easy as you might think. Not taking breaks when mixing. When we mix, we can get into it big time. We can spend hours, you know, in a mixing session, feeling that we're going somewhere. And then you finish your day, you come back in the morning, open up the session, you listen to the mix and it's like, no, God, please, no. And my explanation for this type of thing is not taking breaks. So you lose perspective, you get ear fatigue, you know, and you lack judgment with your mixing moves afterwards. So that's why I always take a 10 minute break after I've been mixing for an hour. Okay, so just to clear my ears, I go upstairs, make myself a cup of coffee or just go for a walk. And the minute I come back, I have a fresh pair of ears to work with. And this way I keep my focus on, my perspective is good, and I keep making better mixing decisions. Because those little 10 minute breaks can save you hours on the long run. Now the next mistake is not to know your DAW's key commands or not working with a controller to speed things up. Now knowing key commands, keyboard shortcuts while mixing, producing, editing, or recording in your DAW can speed up your workflow like crazy. And I'm a big fan on working with controllers. Uh, as you can see, I have like several controllers in front of me, maybe too many. <laughs> so I have one that will control uh, Cubase, uh, my fader port 16, which gives me access to 16 faders. And honestly, I mainly use it to control the faders and also the transports. And I love uh, having the, uh, the chance to get my fingers on faders to mix things up. Only that speeds up my workflow. Any task you often do while mixing in your DAW that you know has a key command, learn the key commands and use them. And that can be as simple as soloing a track, muting a track, go from one track to the other. Any shortcuts will speed up your workflow. Now the next mistake that can slow you down, and this is actually one that I struggle with when I mix my own music, is not having a deadline. Now when I work with a client, we set up a deadline, I deliver on time, and I'm good, you know? But when it comes to my own music, it's something I need to work on. <laughs> and it's possible because I remember uh, years ago and I was working on a project uh, for a client and we had four days to record a full band live album. We're talking about 10 songs. Mix the 10 songs, send that to mastering, and it had to be printed on day five. You know, So we have four days to do the whole thing. Now we're talking about a deadline that is almost impossible, but we were able to make it work. So there's something happening when you have like a deadline that cannot move, you get more focused and you do the impossible to make it work. So that is the power on setting up a deadline. Now to achieve this type of crazy deadline I went through, I needed to think fast. There was no space for me to waste time whatsoever. So the mix template was actually very useful in this case, working on the first song, create a new template for the following songs. And that was the way I was able to mix the 10 songs very quick. So that's my challenge to you, especially if you're working on your own music, set yourself up a deadline. I don't know set up the release date right away before you start to mix. So this way you know when you'll need to be over with the mix, the master, and all the rest so we can release that song on time. The power of deadlines, learning without practicing. We have all access to YouTube. We love watching YouTube videos and to learn about mixing techniques and new plugins, buying several courses, but then we always want to learn more and we don't take the time to practice. And let's face it, you can learn 
as much as you want. If you don't take the time to practice, you will not get faster and it's not going to lead you to be a good mixer. So if in your case you don't have clients to mix for or you don't produce your own music often, I'm going to suggest you to download some free multi-tracks that you can find on several other platforms, including mine, you know. So if you get into my free uh, mix template course, you will have access to several multi-track sessions you can practice your mixing skills with. So the more you practice your mixing skills, the better you'll get and the faster your workflow will get also. Mixing with your eyes, <laughs> okay? Now, this is pretty easy for us to do, especially when we mix in the box, you know, like most of us do. We use a computer to produce music, to mix. We work with plugins. We work with colors. We work with all sorts of elements, a part of the computer that can be distracting. And we can get that tendency to rely on the visuals of the effects we work with to make our mixing decisions. And I know you know this, it's important to use our ears. And let's face it, it's not that easy, especially when we have like those amazing tools in front of us that are visually appealing and that can actually affect our judgment when mixing, you know? So we need to be careful with that. Now, something I like to do before I finish a mix is to go through the whole mix, listening to the whole thing, with my computer screen off. And by doing that, and trust me, try it out yourself, your ears will focus way more on the mix and you'll be able to point out the goods and the bads of that mix and make the proper corrections afterwards. So I'm telling you, try it out and you'll see. It's not gonna be the same listening experience compared to when your computer screen is on. Now, a good way to know if you're actually starting to mix faster, the more you go, is to time yourself. And here's a very cool free plugin you can use to time yourself up when mixing a song. And this one is by a company called Hofa, and it's called Project Time. So you can insert it straight on a uh, dedicated track for it, or even on the mix bus, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the sound whatsoever. So the timer will go on every time you load the project. And when when you close it, the timer stops, okay? So it's a very good way to keep track of your time when mixing a song. So this way, you'll know exactly how much time it takes you to mix a song. Now, what I wanna know is which one of these mistakes you struggle with the most. And watch this video if you want to know my technique on how to mix a full song without any plugins so you can produce the best rough mix possible. That will give you a very good starting point when mixing music. All right, my friend, until next time, take care and see you.